Okay, so I pulled my uh, fermenter out of the uh, dark, cool area where I had it uh, fermenting. And um, just to illustrate to you guys that after a few days that it's really become very active as the yeast is consuming all the sugars, um, converting them to alcohol. So this is a normal process and it should settle down in a few days um, where we'll start, our, we'll start the uh, dry hopping process. Okay, so um, what we've got left is our dry hop step, um, and this is where we've already let our beer uh, ferment, um, which you've seen some uh, active fermentation, it's settled down a little bit. And what we're gonna do is just add a half ounce of hops, uh, cascade again uh, into our beer, and then it's just gonna stay in there um, for a week. And the uh, next step after that will be bottling. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open up our homegrown resealed, um, uh, cascade hops uh, and I'm just gonna real quickly weigh this out this is a little trick that we learned that we can put our muslin bag inside of a, a sanitized jar I've got a sanitizer right here and um, and, I've, and I've sanitized the muslin ba bag remember you want everything that you sanitize or I mean you want everything that's gonna still touch the beer to be sanitized all the way through so this there's no different so I'm just gonna add this uh, my sanitized hands uh, into Whoops, I need to change the units here to ounces. There we go, and I'm gonna go with half an ounce. There's 0.21 and 0 0.28, 0 0.32, 0 0.35, and uh, 0.39, we're getting closer, 0.46. Wow, that is really strong smell. So 0.49. Okay, I'm going to call that a half ounce right there. And then we'll have a little bit left here we can reseal and use on some other project. So at this point, it's really simple. We're just going to tie this off. Um, just like this. And um, I, you, can, you can dry hop without using a, a muslin bag or, or a hops bag. They actually sell hops bags at the brew store. Um, this just limits the amount of... of flotillas that uh, wind up in your end beer. So uh, if that kind of thing grosses you out, then you know I'd recommend the bag. Um, if you don't care if there's a few floaters in there, then I guess you can just put the hops right in the beer. And really whole hops is pretty good about not leaving floaties behind. If you use the hop pellets um, that, um, if you use the hop pellets that break apart and they kind of foam up when you put them in, then uh, for sure put them inside of the bag. It gets kind of nasty. So, I'm going to very carefully, remember we got our layer of CO2 in here. I'm going to very carefully try to not disturb this because I don't want to introduce any air or any oxygen to the beer at this point. I'm just going to very gently put that in there. Ooh, I can smell it. it smells good. It smells good. And uh, close it up. And then I'm going to set it back into my cool, dark closet that I've been letting it ferment in. I just brought it out for this purpose so we could film it. Uh, you don't want you want to expose this to as little light as possible, or it'll start getting a very skunky aroma and flavor. And they just they call it skunking the beer. And so you want to keep it cool and dark um, for another week, and we'll see what it looks like if it's cleared up really nicely, which it should. Um, we can go ahead and bottle it, and that will be uh, my last bot my last video before I do my uh, my beer taste testing video. So um, we'll see you on the next video. Okay, so we finally made it to bottling day. Um, there's a number of ways you can take care of sanitizing your bottles. Um, typically, I will always wash them out just with a, a quick um, dish soap and water bath, um, just making sure that there's nothing that's gotten solid and, um, and dried on the sides of the bottles. I typically store them upside down, so I don't have too much of a problem anyway, but uh, I just like to be sh for sure. So I go ahead and uh, do a quick little wash on them um, before I take the next step to uh, to sanitize the bottles. Okay, so for sanitation, there's a few different uh, avenues you can take here. Um, for these small batches like this, I typically just use a little um, container of sanitizer and I very carefully, just because I do fear the foam, I know you shouldn't, uh, but I do very carefully uh, run sanitizer all around um, the bottles, make sure that everything is contacted inside the bottles and then I'll just store them upside down on top of a paper towel um, to let them drain out uh, before I'm ready to bottle. You can also run them through the hot cycle on a dishwasher 
um, because really 185 is a cold pasture uh, temperature so uh, there's nothing wrong with that all either if you want to go that route this just is a little bit faster but certainly if you're doing larger batches and you're going to bottle 50 bottles um, you know the dishwasher might be a quicker avenue just make sure that your dishwasher is all cleaned out and that your kids haven't put some soup bowl or chili bowl uh, into your dishwasher before you try to go through your sanitation uh, step also make sure that you sanitize um, all of your equipment so we also have a bottling wand and some other um, objects that are going to make contact with the beer so uh, just make sure that you take care of all of those items as well you can see uh, that i spent some time uh, washing out the bottles and i ran it through sanitizer just like i ran everything else through um, i still have the hops bag in here so i'm going to go ahead and uh, take this time to um, pull it out just so it doesn't wind up straining or plugging off the, uh, the, the spigot at the bottom there when we're done um, bottling our, or on our last couple of bottles of beer. So I'm just gonna very carefully grab this and take that as my sanitized pair of tongs. So I'm just gonna take that out of here. And uh, remember, we don't want to introduce but we really don't want to introduce any air or any oxygen to the beer at this point. So I'm going to be very careful. There's still a layer of CO2 on here. I can smell it. It smells actually very nice. So I'm just, once this is drained off here, I'm just going to pull the hops bag out. This is our dry hop edition um, that we did last week. So I'm just going to set that aside just like that. And uh, I'll go ahead and put this back on. Now, I got to say the beer, it smells nice. It doesn't come out as clear uh, as I was hoping. Uh, usually this this uh, layer of yeast will flocculate down. You can see I've got a good solid uh, layer here, but it's a little hazier than I was hoping for. So I might play around with uh, some different uh, aspects. The last time I did this, it, it came out a little better. It smells very malty. I'll say that right off the bat. It's not as hoppy as I thought it would smell, um, but it is. it does smell very, very malty. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do uh, before I bottle is actually um, I'm going to go through and I'm going to add priming sugar to each of our bottles and you can use white sugar for pails uh, it'll dry it out a little bit um, corn sugar this is $1.39 a pound so um, it's it, it it behaves a lot better for priming sugar um, when you're when you're actually doing bottles you know you're not de dealing with co2 we're actually going to let the priming sugar um we're going to let the yeast consume the priming sugar and and pressurize each bottle accordingly so the only thing that's kind of weird about doing small batches like this is normally like if you're doing a five gallon batch you'd mix this in with some hot water make sort of a thin syrup out of it and then put it in the bottom of your bottling bucket and then add all of the new beer to that and stir it up um, to make sure it's evenly distributed. It's, I, it's, not, it's not quite as easy to do it. You, you could do it with a, with a small batch, with a tiny um, bottling vessel, but um, I've had pretty good luck just being very careful and um, measuring out just one level teaspoon at a time um, and, and adding it to each bottle individually. So. I'm just grab my measuring spoons here. Um, you can pick up corn sugar at your local brew store, but that's a level, one level teaspoon of corn sugar. If you use white sugar uh, to prime, make it slightly less than a teaspoon or it's gonna be a little bit hot. You're gonna have a little more carbonation than you're probably gonna want. So I'm just gonna move through these very quickly and thanks to the magic of uh, high-speed editing, this should go very quickly for you guys. Okay, that was that. Uh, so, our 
bottles have the priming sugar in them. That's just enough corn sugar to carbonate each uh, bottle. Um, it'll take about a week and a half before it reaches full pressure. Um, and you can, you can try out your first bottle. So I've got the priming sugar all in there. Um, so the next step is um, I've kind of set up this apparatus. And this is what I like about the Sun Tea Jars. Um, is that you can you can just put a piece of uh, plastic hose and then attach a bottling wand which has a little springy valve at the bottom here um, and these things are really nice for filling bottles I mean it really uh, you fill it right up to the top and then when you pull it out it gives you just the perfect amount of head space for carbonation um, they're about two dollars at your local brew store they're not very expensive maybe three dollars uh, totally worth it. The other thing you can do is just hold the bottle very carefully under the spigot and try to fill them one at a time that way if you don't want to spend the three dollars for the bottling one. But this is cheap and it works awesome. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the spigot. There's always a little yeast that, that forms kind of right in here and I like to clear that out. So I'm just going to open up the valve now. I've got this wide open and I'm just going to press on the bottom of this cup and you can see how that was a really kind of golden yellowy uh, when I was filling it and then you can see there's chunks of stuff in there a little bit of trub a little bit of yeast And it's actually not that bad of a deal if you get it in your beer It'll just settle to the bottom just when you pour it out pour pour it into a glass and you can separate it out But so this is looking pretty murky um, So I'll just pour this off um, right here Just to clear it um, You know, there's nothing wrong even with bottling that it's just gonna be a little bit you know, have a layer, you know silt at the bottom of one of the bottles or one of your first bottles. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little taste to see if this has actually come out and, uh, and if it's something I even want to bottle. It's possible that this whole thing turned into a disaster and, and I don't want to bottle it at all. But so far it smells good um, and it looks nice. It's not as clear as I'd like, but that's okay. That's really nice. It's very mild. Uh, it's flat, certainly, at this point, um, but um, it's got a nice, not as hoppy as an IPA, but it definitely has a nice pale ale flavor to it, and it's a nice, it's a really flavorful, good beer at this point. I mean, this is early, obviously. should taste a little different after we're done um, carbonating it, but uh, this is nice, and this is all ready to go. So um, from here, I will just uh, bottle the first one. Yeah, I'm really happy with the way that came out. So, again, all I do is I'll hold this uh, right up to the bottling wand, and I just push it to the bottom of the bottle, and I let it fill up right until it gets to the tippy, tippy, tippy top. And then, um, once it's there, uh, and I pull out the bottling wand, it'll give me just enough head space, just right about there. And it gives me just the perfect amount of headspace to carbonate the beer. That's beautiful. So um, I've got right here a little tiny bowl of sanitizer. I am just going to set my sanitized cap uh, on top of the bottle. And then it's not vulnerable until um, actually ever from here on out that should be pretty good so i'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these and thanks to the magic of editing this should go very fast for you guys Okay, so that's done. Uh, looks like it was about 13, eh, 12 and three quarters of a bottle. That last one might be kind of funky, so we'll see what that one looks like. Just maybe uh, on that last one, don't serve it to your friends. But um, you can see all I've got left with now is the yeast. You could harvest it. Um, 
If you bought dry yeast, you still have three quarters of a package left if you followed this video at all. So, you know, at this point, you just wash all this stuff off, call it good. So really, the only thing left here now is going to be uh, just to crimp the bottles. And uh, again, uh, this is uh, one that I got from my dad when I was uh, a kid growing up. He bought it so he could make homemade root beer every summer. and. Uh, so it's a little sentimental, but there's a number of bottle cappers you can get. Um, there's nothing uh, super special about any of them. Uh, you just buy some crown caps. Uh, I recycle beer bottles, so um, it's pretty cinchy. You just go down on it, uh, make sure that the cap is centered up, you know, on the bottle. And then you just press down and it puts a little crimp right on top of the bottle, just like that. So now, um, this is my three quarter bottle here, but that's pretty much it right there. So the yeast that's in here will consume the the, uh, um, the yeast and build up carbon, you know, CO2 pressure inside the bottle, and it'll carbonate the beer for us. It should be ready in about a week and a half, at which point I will for sure do a taste test in front of the camera, probably invite over a, a daring friend and, uh, and see what he thinks, if it actually will pass for beer or not. I'm actually pretty happy with the way the taste test came out. Um, so I'm feeling pretty good about the whole thing. I did a good job of sanitizing everything. I'm not worried about anything uh, getting infected or having some um, something in there that I didn't want. So um, the one thing I noticed looking back at my other videos that I didn't say is make sure that when you have your fermenter, um, you know, setting aside for a couple weeks, make sure that you've got it in a dark, cool place. Um, there's definitely a thing of it's too cold. You don't want it below 55 degrees or it's going to have a tough time fermenting, but you don't want it, you know, 75 or 80 degrees either. If you can keep it right about 65, 70 degrees, that would be perfect. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, cap the, or, uh, crimp the rest of these bottles. And uh, again, thanks to the magic of editing, this should just take a couple of seconds. Thirteen. Okay, so uh, they are all looking really good. I'm really excited to see how this uh, turns out for us. Um, hopefully it'll even clear up a little bit for us over time. I'm not too optimistic about that. I'm not exactly sure why it's as hazy as this. It certainly wasn't last time. We had a great protein break. Um, it might have been, you know, um, using or reusing that yeast that I'd harvested from one of my previous batches might have had something to do with this. But um, it should have come out clearer. And, um, and I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep doing videos. Um, uh, had some, little, some pretty good feedback here and there. And it's been a, a fun set of videos to do. So um, I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed watching the whole process. Uh, I hope you stick around to uh, see my critique, or I should say my friend's critique of... Uh, of the beer when it's done. Um, I'm pretty optimistic. I'm pretty happy with the way that it tastes out of the fermenter. I think it's going to shape up to be a, a nice beer. Um, and uh, and I enjoy uh, keep uh, to keep working on this in the future and, uh, and to see what you guys think. So um, until it comes time to open the first bottle, we'll see you then.